Today we have a very special guest here, Kevin Zida, uh, who has been just elected our new managing partner. And it's a privilege to have him here for the second time of the year. In 2018, he's been already twice in, in Brazil. So thank you, Kevin, for coming here. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, welcome to our region. And uh, yeah, can you tell us a little bit why you're here? Well, this is the second time I'm here this year. And the reason is simple. This is one of the most dynamic parts of the world. And when I come here, I get to meet a set of clients who are doing some really interesting things a set of colleagues who are innovating and finding new ways to help those clients succeed, and a wonderful spirit of creativity, entrepreneurship, and a genuine sense that tomorrow is going to be better than today. So I come here for the energy, the inspiration, and frankly, just the enjoyment of being with you and our colleagues in Latin America. What do you see uh, as the role of Latin America? This is a region of the firm where a lot of the innovations that we have have actually been piloted and originated. If I think of our work in digital and a lot of what we're doing to serve our clients in the digital economy, the way in which this practice, this office, has built a capability to help our clients move from the theory that digital can be a great way of changing and transforming their businesses into the reality of what that actually means has to change, much of that has actually been pioneered here. And if I think about some of the things you've done, and specifically that includes rethinking the processes that underpin some of our financial clients and really helping them think of new ways to organize in light of the fact we now have digital as a truly important capability. That's the kind of thing which I think in Latin America you've been able to move faster than the rest of the world. In some cases, I think Latin America and here in Brazil, you've jumped, you've actually decided to skip a generation. So if the rest of the world was busy fig figuring out what to do with digital when it came to the internet and the basic forms of connectivity, you've actually thought, what does that mean for mobile? And really making sure that smartphones actually become integrated into day-to-day -day customer experience. So a lot of what I see here in Latin America is pioneering. It's very relevant to what we do in the rest of the world. And it's an exciting time because I think you are at the center of a lot of the change that's happening and taking that change and bringing it to the rest of the firm. That's one of the reasons I like to come here. You've been in many places already, right? You lived in Europe, North America, yeah. in Asia, in multiple parts of Asia. I mean, how do you see the world, I mean, these days, and how do you see the, the role of Latin America in the world? Well, I have had the privilege of living in many parts of the world, and frankly, when I worked in the U.S., I spent over a year traveling back and forward to Sao Paulo to serve one of my consumer clients here. And if I think about the world and the complexity of this world, what's happening is we're seeing a unique moment in time when actually all the economies of the world are growing at a relatively decent rate. That includes here in Brazil. And I think that moment in time is characterized by some interesting contrasts. On the one hand, we're seeing the global economy growing. We're seeing what people call synchronized growth. But on the other hand, we're seeing movements to actually bring down the free movement of goods, to restrict trade. And it's an interesting time because we have a choice. We can either turn inwards or we can turn outwards. What's intriguing to me about Latin America is if you look at a lot of the investment that's now coming into Latin America, much of that creates an opportunity to really see these economies grow. And in turn, what that means for us is that we can participate in helping the economies grow locally, build the skills, create employment, create jobs, but at the same time also help figure out how these countries are going to participate in the global economy. I'm optimistic that Latin America is going to become an even more important part of the economy. Let's face it, this part of the world has had some difficult times. But it's important to note that now many of the economies are starting to see better growth. And with that better growth, I hope comes an opportunity to really see Latin America play an even more important part. It's clearly a major destination for foreign investment. We've seen a big step up. I live in Hong Kong. I can tell you that every time I meet a Chinese investor, they want to know, should we increase our investment in Latin America? Where should we be investing? What does that mean? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I think we're going to see that happen more. The other side of that equation, though, is what are Latin American companies going to do to incorporate their initiatives into the rest of the world? That two-way flow, that's where we get involved. We make a difference locally, but we also make a difference globally. And that's what excites me about this part of the world. So you talked about Chinese, I mean, investing big time in Latin America. In fact, Chinese companies were the number one investor in Brazil last year. 
but we're not seeing a lot yet of Brazilian companies going abroad. What the Brazilian companies could do in order to change that? Well, I think a couple of things come into play. The historic reason that has gotten in the way of Brazilian companies investing overseas has actually been structural. High interest rates at home, very low interest rates overseas, it meant that the equation in terms of investment opportunities didn't quite work. That equation is changing. Brazilian interest rates are much lower than they were. They're down in the low sixes. At the same time, I actually think the scale of opportunity overseas and actually the scale with which Brazilian companies need to earn returns creates more of a momentum towards investing. And so my hope is that actually we can see more Brazilian companies looking overseas. They're no longer as disadvantaged as they were from an economic perspective. Moreover, Brazil has a lot to bring. If I think about the industry is where you lead, if you take some of the agricultural sector, the reality is the rest of the world needs to have a productivity revolution in agriculture. You've got a competitive agriculture industry. In fact, we're seeing right now what's happening with premium soybeans and the degree to which the rest of the world is going to be increasingly dependent on what you do here. You could take that technology and move it overseas. Your creative industries are very competitive. Again, they should be overseas. So I'm optimistic that the structural economic barrier has dropped. I think the reality of the scale of opportunity overseas relative to here remains very attractive and you have something to take to the rest of the world. And I'd love to think we can play a part in making that happen.